sudden sensory neural hearing loss is hearing loss that results from damage to either the cochlea or the cochlear nerve. Etiology for sudden sensory neural hearing loss Viral infection The viral infection manifested by a cold may propagate into the inner ear or cause an inflammatory reaction in the inner ear that is harmful to hearing. Other viruses such as herpes viruses may also have a role. Idiopathic this occurs for unknown reasons and an instigating event is never identified. There are two theories for why this develops. Membrane break theory. The inner ear has an intricate structure of membranes that separate two different kinds of fluids, the endolymph and the paralymph. These fluids vary in their electrolyte composition and produce an electrochemical gradient across membranes. This gradient is vital to the electrical activity of the inner ear. The membrane break theory assumes that for some reason there is a break that occurs in the membranes that causes mixing of the two fluids. This produces electrical chaos and result in hearing loss. Inflammation occurs with migration of cells that mediate inflammation into the inner ear. The initial cells that migrate there are destructive in nature, this is the basis for steroid treatment. Mini stroke theory The blood supply to the inner ear comes from the labyrinthine artery which is a tiny branch off the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. This theory assumes that a clot or spasm of this tiny branch causes decreased blood supply to the inner ear. Again, inflammatory cells migrate to the inner ear. They are initially destructive, and this is the basis for steroid treatment. Medications that dilate blood vessels have also been found to have some utility. Niacin is a naturally occurring vitamin that causes vasodilation. There is no known correlation between development of strokes in general and sudden hearing loss. In another words, Patients who develop sudden hearing loss do not have an increased chance for developing other kinds of strokes. Patients who develop other kinds of strokes do not have an increased chance of developing sudden hearing loss, either. Complications for sudden sensory neural hearing loss Many patients learn to cope with loss of hearing from one ear. They learn how to position themselves in a conference room or a restaurant, for example, to maximize hearing. Unfortunately, these patients have an inability to localize the direction a sound is coming from. Diagnosis for Sudden Sensory Neural Hearing Loss Sudden hearing loss can be diagnosed with a combination of subjective data and audiologic testing. A simple audiogram can show the extent of loss. This data can also be compared with previous audiograms. Treatment for Sudden Sensory Neural Hearing Loss Treatment with antiviral agents and vasodilators can be offered. The efficacy is difficult to determine. The inflammation that develops in certain kinds of cell-releasing enzymes that break up protein are initially destructive. Later, the reparative phase begins. The basis for steroid treatment is to limit the initial destructive phase. Steroid treatment should be given as soon as possible. As with everything in medicine, there is no guarantee that this will work. There are three ways of delivering steroids to the inner ear. Oral. We recommend treatment with prednisone at a very high dose initially but gradually tapers over 9 days. The side effects of prednisone treatment are mood disturbances, insomnia, blood sugar alterations in diabetics, and gastric hyperacidity. Not everyone develops all or any of these side effects. Diabetic patients need to check their blood sugar frequently during treatment. I recommend steroids be taken with food. Malox or myelana should be taken for any acid-related symptoms. Intratympanic A more powerful way of delivering the steroid is to inject it into the middle ear through the tympanic membrane. From here the steroid diffuses through the round window membrane and enters the inner ear. The procedure is done in the office. This is a relatively painless procedure that involves anesthetizing the tympanic membrane with injection thereafter. A repeat audiogram is done two weeks later. If there is improvement, a repeat injection is offered. There is a 1% chance of a persistent 1 mm perforation at the injection site. This may require patching the eardrum. Patients may experience temporary disequilibrium that may last 30 minutes. No patients have loss of additional hearing or persistent disequilibrium. Decadron perfusion of the inner ear. This is the most powerful way of delivering steroid to the inner ear. This involves general anesthesia for one hour. During the procedure the eardrum is elevated and the round window membrane is perfused with high-dose steroid. An absorbable pad soaked in concentrated steroid is left at the round window membrane.